Yeah, it really is an attractive laptop, isn't it? And it really is impressive. This laptop is a glimpse into the future, if you ask me. It is an APU that has a CPU about as strong as my desktop. Granted, it's still a quad core in my desktop. I haven't upgraded to Threadripper yet, but it is that strong and it is more efficient and it does only use 65 watts to deliver you near RX 570 performance with legitimately the equivalent of like i5 desktop CPU gaming. It is truly incredible. So where is it? Well, I sent it back because the overall result was horrible. I couldn't accept it. That's right. Kind of flipping the script on you guys here. I know you think uh, with my glowing review of my my Radeon 7 and then the TV behind me and then, you know, I get an HBM-powered Vega laptop. Everyone knows Tom at Moore's Law is Dead loves Vega. The only guy who thinks Vega is great. He's going to love this Vega-powered HBM laptop. But I hated it. And I sent it back for a refund. It just wasn't worth it, even at its absurdly discounted price. I got it with a company discount for like, I don't know, thirteen, no, 1200 bucks, which it was very good. A 4K touchscreen, a stylus, all of it seemed so amazing. But it didn't really work. And so this really is what I said, a glimpse into the future. AMD, your products will only be as good in laptops as they are utilized. Now, let me explain why I had to send this thing back. It was bigger than I wanted it to be, that's for sure. Um, for some, That's my fault, though. So, And it was definitely heavier than it needed to be. What do I mean heavier than it needed to be? Well, I used to have a Sager 13-inch gaming netbook, and that was back when those existed. They don't really make them that much anymore, which is unfortunate because I, I really loved that mentality. And that thing weighed about half as much as this one that had actually a more efficient chip. It had, back then, this had a Haswell, I believe, 4550-watt quad-core i7 and a GTX 765M, which was a 10, which was a 650Ti, a Kepler 650Ti. Straight up, that's what it was. A more, like, it would be what, it would, today's nomenclature, it would have been called a 650Ti Max-Q. And I undervolted it, overclocked the memory, and that thing was sick. But overall, that whole system used about 120 watts. I clocked it in at the wall. That HP laptop I had to send back just now with a Vega HBM Power Graphics card in i7 only used like 75 watts. And yet it weighed more. And the reason is this was a shoehorned NVIDIA laptop that AMD lucked out in even being able to sell their products in. Let me explain. The biggest problem with AMD laptops at all right now is that they are not built to fit in the existing norms, right? What are the norms? Well, really, there's a few sizes. You have your 5 to 10 watt ultra portables like your Lenovo Yogas and your MacBook Airs. Well, it, I guess now they're more like uh, just MacBooks are like a 10 watt um, laptop now for a crazy long battery life. So you get your 5 to 10 watt laptops here. Then you've got your 15 to 25 watt, usually 22 watt laptops. These are your ultra portable ultra books that have high boost clocks so they can do quick editing on the go and at least hopefully feel snappy. Right. So you got your 10 watts, you got your 25 watt laptops, and then you've got a couple more. You've got like your 45 to 65 watt, so usually semi gaming portable laptops. And then you've got your over 100 watt ones. And AMD needs to pick a goddamn lane for all of their products. The problem is all of their APUs seem to be in between these lanes. And so you'll have this AMD APU that can fit in a 10 watt package, but has to massively throttle to do so. Or you'll have this 
crazy compact APU that isn't quite small enough to fit into the 15 watt package. So they end up putting this 25 watt APU in a 65 watt laptop that weighs more than it should, has a shitty battery. Like why are you making your products look so stupid? And in my case, we had a 65 watt APU, a laptop that at most used 80 watts total, shoved into a laptop and that literally there was another model that had a 1050 Ti where the Max Q version uses at least 40 watts, and then they would put a 25 or 45 watt i7. So you're getting to something that still uses more energy than the AMD one, but weighs the same and costs less. AMD, you need to build your products. You need to take this APU that you had with HBM and cut it down more so that it can fit into the 45, 25 watt laptops so that it's not confused with these 1050 Ti's or you need to really make sure it has takes that extra, frankly, empty space in the laptop where the 1050 Ti normally would go, fill it up with heat sink and make it so the thing doesn't throttle because it was such a disaster, guys. I booted up Far Cry 5 and I'm, I shit you not, this 65 watt APU was running Far Cry 5 maxed out. Complete ultra settings in 1080p at like 50 frames a second. If I turned down a couple settings, I could basically play Far Cry 5, a beautiful game, in 1080p on my laptop <laughs> and at 60 frames. That's an insane accomplishment for a 65-watt APU. And yet, the second it got to 85 Celsius, boom, dropped to 800 megahertz core, and the graphics card would throttle from 985 megahertz core to 400, and then never boost back up. Never. At least if it would have like done what uh, like the RX or the R9 Nano did, where it can boost to 1,000, but it might level out at 700 megahertz. It didn't do that. It would just boost down to like 200 or 400 megahertz, and then just stay there. And the processor would stay at 800 megahertz. I did a BIOS update. I undervolted. I limited the clock speeds as much as I could, but I couldn't limit the CPU to lower than the base clock. If I know if I could have limited the CPU to about 2.5 gigahertz, it wouldn't have bottlenecked my graphics card. It would have, and, and it wouldn't have ever gotten over 75 Celsius, but it wouldn't let me. It literally was so stupid that if I plugged in my laptop, it would insta throttle after two minutes and I'd be fucked. I'd have to reboot. But if I left the laptop unplugged, it would throttle the processor to 2.7 gigahertz and then my laptop wouldn't lose frame rates. So I would have to play this at all times unplugged to get good performance in games? What kind of design choice is that? I did everything I could. I had to send it back, and I was profoundly let down. I thought I found my dream laptop for a good price, but it just didn't cut it. And so that's why you're not going to get an elaborate review as in-depth as my Radeon 7 Threadripper of graphics cards or my OLED TV review that took days to put together because this doesn't deserve it. I sent it back for a refund. No one buy the Vega APU Spectre. And watch out for other laptops that do this. And it's unfortunate because I don't know what happened to my old laptop. It wasn't stolen, but it won't show up. And I travel. I'm going to Silicon Valley soon for a convention. I have to have my laptop there to do mobile editing. So I just had to basically buy the new model of my old one, which maybe I'll do a review for that laptop. I do think it's good. But I basically had to buy – it'll be like 40% better. It's the newest model, but it's more or less the same chip as it was uh, – laptop it was last year. It's a 13-watt uh, – it's a 13-inch, super-thin MacBook Air-sized laptop with an MX250 dedicated graphics card, which is just good enough to play The Division and Battlefield 5 on the go. And I guess I'm just buying the, basically the same laptop again that I had last year. It's so stupid. I hate it. But this is where we are. So I hope HP hears me here that... The reason I returned it is that you throttled it like a bunch of idiots. You really had a great product. And also, HP, please go out of your way to tailor some of these chips to more of – to get the best that they can be out of the SOCs you're using. You can't just put a 65-watt APU into a 100-watt chassis. It looks so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> and – 
you're throttling. I've never seen it. I, all laptops throttle sometimes. It's it gets, comes with the territory. But there was no reason for this to just go down to 800 megahertz and stay there. It, it was a disaster, an unmitigated disaster of ruining the best components I've ever come across. And AMD. Some of this is on you. Intel goes out of their way to work with manufacturers to build laptop designs around their chips, and they're rewarded for it. They work better, AMD. What the fuck? You can't let people do this to your products. You're your own worst enemy sometimes. There were 3,700U laptops that were almost what I needed. But all of them, whether from Asus or HP, all of your, AP, all of your laptops, AMD, this 3700U, 12 nanometer APU that probably matches my 250, MX250 NVIDIA graphics card plus Intel i7 while using less energy. All of your laptops have only 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Unless I pay more money than an Intel Plus dedicated NVIDIA graphics card. So I'm not going to do that. I'm taking the extra performance when I plug it in of the NVIDIA graphics card sorry this no this is ridiculous amd it shouldn't i shouldn't have to choose between a 600 dollar or 700 dollar 3700 u laptop or 3500 u roughly same performance really 3500 u laptop that is pigeonholed by eight gigabytes of ram not enough for my editing and multitasking on the go and 256 gigabytes of storage definitely not enough for my editing on the go or paying $1,300 for something that, well, it will definitely be more um, efficient than the NVIDIA plus Intel counterpart. It costs a few hundred dollars more, and it's a little weaker. I shouldn't have to decide between these things. AMD, work with manufacturers. Make them get the best that they can out of your profoundly great APU technology. And I guess hopefully I'll get a Zen 3 or Zen 4 laptop in a couple of years when I need to upgrade again. But looks like it's still Intel and NVIDIA. Not a fanboy. I buy what's best for the money for my needs. And unfortunately, in a laptop, I just had to get Intel and NVIDIA again. Sorry. <sighs> Disappointed, and I am honest. Don't worry, I haven't just turned into an NVIDIA or Intel fanboy. I'm still planning on getting Threadripper, and I love my Radeon 7. But that's what it is. I get what's the best for me. And sometimes it is still Intel or NVIDIA. Well, no such thing as bad products, just bad prices. And a bad freaking software. God damn it, AMD. So, yeah, please. Um, Subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate my fans. They don't let me down, and you guys make it possible. Share my video if you liked it so other people hopefully spread the word that AMD just I, – I, I really do hope AMD sees this so they really start thinking about getting out of their own way. And, of course, my Patreon members make this possible. If you're a Patreon member, you can talk with me in depth and personally on the Discord back and forth and ask me whatever you want that maybe I didn't cover in this video. All right, thank you.